The first thing we would need to do to get a grip on this question is to sketch a graph of the trigonometric equation. So we've recopied that equation here. We can see that the amplitude is equal to two, and this is why we have the graph rising to a maximum value of positive two. And then we would also wanna know where it terminates, although it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this question. Briefly, we know that the period would equal two pi divided by the coefficient of x. So in this case, pi over two. And to simplify that, we could multiply the denominator by two as well as the numerator. That would cancel these twos, the pi's would cancel, and then when you multiply two by two, you get four. So the period of this curve is equal to four, but you'll notice we've only sketched half of the period. We started at the origin because it's a sine function, and we went to half of the period, which is positive two, and we just stopped because we really don't need more than that to understand this question. So that's just a little bit of background about how you could graph a partial version of that equation. Next, we consider a point on that equation or on the graph of that equation, and that point is located at one third comma one. Now, the question asks us to determine the rate of change in the distance from the particle to the origin and what that rate of change actually is at a particular instant. Now think about that, the distance from the particle, which is the green dot, to the origin, which of course is located over here. So we need to come up with a, an expression for that distance. Now to do that, we could turn this drawing into a right triangle. So we're gonna draw a right triangle between the origin and the particle. And the reason that's effective is because the coordinates of that particle are x comma y meaning that this horizontal segment is x and this vertical segment is y. We can call the distance between those two points z. It's basically the hypotenuse of our right triangle. Now, of course, the Pythagorean theorem would tell us that z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. That's great, but the problem is that equation expressing the distance is doing so in terms of two different variables, x and y. We would like that to be expressed in terms of just one variable. So we notice from the trigonometric equation that the y-coordinate can be substituted with the expression two times the sine of pi over two x. Don't forget to square that. So that's better because now our distance between the two points equation is expressed in terms of just a single variable, which is x. So once you've done that in a related rates problem, your next step is to take your equation and differentiate it with respect to time. So here comes the actual calculus step. We'll begin with z squared. We'll differentiate with respect to time. So you basically do two things. You do a power rule and a chain rule. Now the power rule would tell us that the derivative of z squared would be two times z to the power of one. But the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of your variable with respect to time. So in other words, dz dt. A lot of students forget that when they first learn this topic, so don't forget to multiply by dz dt. Carrying on, same idea. x squared becomes 2x to the power of 1, and then chain rule says multiply by the derivative of your variable with respect to time, so dx dt. Now the derivative of the trigonometric term, we're going to do a power rule. So it's gonna be two times that two, that's gonna become four times the sine of pi over two x. This will all be to the power of one now, but chain rule says, don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. Now the inner function is this function right here. It's the function that's inside of these parentheses here. And so we need the derivative of that. The derivative of sine is basically cosine. So we would have two times cosine of pi over two x, and then chain rule still requires us to multiply by the derivative of the pi over two x, so that would be times pi over two, and then we would have to multiply by the derivative of the variable with respect to time, so dx dt. Very good, but a little bit complicated. Let's see if we can simplify it. Let's look at each term and notice that each term contains a factor of two. So at the very least, we could divide every term by two, which would actually cancel those twos out. We can simplify a little bit more. We have four multiplied by pi over two. That would be four pi over two. That would reduce to just two pi. And we'll put that two pi basically as a coefficient of this sine term. 
Good. Now, let's recall, we're trying to solve for dz dt. We were asked how fast was the distance between the particle and the origin changing at a particular instant. So we want to solve that for dz dt, but to do so, we're going to have to start plugging in a bunch of information. So we're going to need to plug in for z, for x, as well as dx dt. So we know x, go back to the picture, x had a value equal to one third. We just go back to the information. Remember the point had an x coordinate of one third. So we do know x is equal to one third. That's nice. We also need a dx dt. That was part of our equation down below. But that's given to us. Notice it says that the x coordinate increases, that's a clue that you have a derivative there, at a rate of radical 10 centimeters per second. So in other words, the rate of change in x with respect to time is square root 10 centimeters per second. Now what we don't have is z, but that's going to be relatively easy to find because we have this equation right here. All we need to do is plug in our x coordinate, which was 1 third, and don't forget to square that. And then our y coordinate, you look back at the data and that was equal to positive one. So now we have z squared Let's square the one, we'll square the three. We'll square this one. So z squared is equal to one ninth plus one. Of course, that's equal to just 10 ninths. And then to finish solving for z, we would just square root both sides of that. So z is the square root of 10 over the square root of nine. Of course, the square root of nine is just three. So there we go. We know z is square root 10 over three. We know x is one third, and we know dx dt is radical 10 centimeters per second. Let's go ahead and plug all that data in. Great. Thing has been plugged in at this point and we've omitted the units for clarity. Now it's a matter of simplifying this sort of monstrosity here. Now look at this here. You have pi over six right there. You also have the same quantity there. Hopefully we remember from trigonometry that the sine of pi over six is equal to one half and that the cosine of pi over six is equal to the square root of three over two. And then we have the rest of it here. Perhaps this can be written as root 10 over three as well. Okay, so let's continue simplifying. We have two times one half, which is just one. So this is gonna end up just being one pi times root three times root 10. And then this is all over two because these denominators were ones and one times two there would give us that two. So that's fancy. Let's see, next we might multiply every term by three to cancel some denominators. So for example, multiply this term by three, multiply this term by three, and then multiply this term by three. So these threes would cancel, those threes would cancel as well. So now we just have root 10 times the dz dt on the left side. And on the right side, we have root 10 plus three pi root three root 10 all over two. One more step here, we could just divide every term by root 10. And this is gonna be neat, particularly with regard to the last term. We divide that by root 10 and those root 10s would cancel. So with those, these cancel and become a one. So it looks like the right side, which is our answer, is gonna be one plus, and then we have three pi root three over two, and that's a little hideous, and then this is dz dt. And so this will be the correct answer to the problem. We can attach a unit to our answer. We know that the rate of change in x was measured in centimeters per second, so the rate of change in z would also be centimeters per second. So this would be the final answer to the question.